Hello everyone and welcome to this video. I hope you enjoy the extract that you have just listened to. I have plenty of new gear in my recording studio in order to provide the best drum tracks possible. And I just wanted to show you the audio quality that I can now provide with drums tracking. But before we talk a little bit about the recording setup and the new gear that I have, let's watch another extract of me recording drums. The recording setup is the same except for the snare, which is different because now I, I have also three different snare to choose from a recording session to another one in order to have the best sounds possible for the music. So what's new with the recording setup? First of all, the audio interface. I was using a Focusrite 8PREX, which was pretty decent. And I was using several other preamps that were doing the conversion from analog to numeric in order to record into a computer. And I had some issues synchronizing all these different machine and the conversion was not the best. So now I have an Antelope 32 Orion HD, which is much, much better. And I have pretty much the same preamp, but they are going into the audio interface in an analog signals and the audio interface is doing the conversion. The conversion analog to numeric is much better and I don't have any problem of synchronization between different machines. And the sound quality is already much better thanks to that. But the second thing that is new is that I don't provide 100% raw tracks anymore. I've noticed that some people were struggling a little bit to get great sounds out of my drums take. And when I was, well, making some drum tracking for Mitsubatic, for example, we sent the uh, recording to a very, very good studio and the sound was absolutely amazing. So my point was, well, when you take a drum machine for your record, maybe it doesn't have the articulation and the cymbal sounds uh, that a real recording will have. It doesn't have the feeling of a real drummer and sometimes the writing is not so clever because you just wrote stuff in MIDI and you haven't played it so you haven't really feel the drumming and so it's not the best possible. So you want a drummer basically for all of these, better drumming parts, better symbols articulation, better feeling. But if the tracks are just too hard to use, it's it's pointless to ask a drummer to do a recording for you. And if you use a drum machine, that is the main thing. You will have a pretty decent sound straight away. So now I just want to provide tracks that are pre-processed, let's say, so they get along with each other in a very easy way. You receive my tracks, you open everything into your DAW, you do the leveling, and then you just have to put an automatic uh, mastering plugins and everything sounds decent. Exactly um, the same thing than when you use a drum machine. So in order to do this kind of pre-processing stuff, I am using also some external hardware processing. I have SPL Transient Designer and I have Rupert Neve Compressor Limiter. Um, and I am using this together with some SSL EQing simulation that are run by the Antelope Orion 32 HD. On um, the snare's microphone, the Tom's microphone and the Floor Tom's microphone. I'm using also some high cut and low cut, especially on the hi-hat uh, microphone and the cymbals microphone. Just want to cut the low frequencies that are not really useful. Uh, I put some high frequencies on the hi-hat, the right microphone, on the overhead's microphone too. Basically, I'm just doing like the mandatory stuff that is absolutely needed uh, to the tracks so they sound well and they get along with each other well. 
The idea is not to send fully processed tracks to anyone, except if I have a request for that, because you might want to push the processing process into a direction or another one just to fit, um, I mean, what you like, but also to fit the guitar sound. And you might want some pretty raw stuff, so when you hire someone that is a beast at doing drum sounds, this person will do just the best job possible because this person is starting with raw tracks. But the idea is just to provide some slightly processed tracks, all the mandatory stuff, so even if you hire someone that is very good at doing drum sounds, you will just save time and then you will have more time out of the weeks or two weeks that you booked to do the processing of your album to make some work on the automation of the vocal, so more reverb here and there, more volume here and there, to deal with the, the background, uh, the backing vocals. This kind of stuff takes a lot of time in the studio, and if you save time on the drum sound, you can spend more time on this. So that is why I provide any time pre-processed tracks now. But I am also doing another important thing to my tracks. Of course I provide a kick trigger track. When the music can benefit from it, I'm also using, use, I'm also using a kick microphones, a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone. But now I am also providing, of course, snare microphones, toms microphone, but also snare triggers and toms triggers. And in order to make these trigger tracks, I am not using any samples out, out of a drum library. I'm using my own samples. So every time I am doing a recording, doesn't matter if it is just for a single song, an EP or an album, I am recording samples of the whole drum kit. I am providing this also, but I'm using these samples to create trigger tracks uh, for the recording that I did. The idea is not that in the end you just use the trigger tracks, but when you do the leveling, when you have open all my tracks into your DAW and you do the leveling, you can choose to have more trigger track or more microphone tracks just to fit what you like the most. If you put more trigger track, you will be able to have a more powerful mastering with plenty of guitar, like super, super loud volume on the guitars because the drums will still cut through uh, thanks to the trigger track but you will also have something a little bit more robotic. So if you want this, you just use more trigger track. If you want something a little bit more organic, and if you don't mind that the drums or the guitar are a little bit more quiet, you can use more microphone tracks, or you can use a pretty even level on both tracks to have like the best of both worlds. Personally, I like to have some trigger tracks in my recordings, uh, not a lot, and the tips that I am using to set the level of the trigger tracks is just to put the faster part of the recording, like a blast beat at 260, 280, 300 BPM, and I make sure that um, the dynamic top microphone of my snare, if we are talking about the snare, is at the same level than the trigger track. It's like a 50-50 blend. But in the end, it's not a 50-50 blend between microphone and trigger because I have two top snare microphone and a bottom snare microphone. And the trigger track is just at the level of the top microphone of the snare. So then, of course, it is totally up to you to make the leveling as you want. But I am providing these trigger tracks because they are absolutely useful if you want to make the sounds by yourself. And if you hire someone to make the sounds for you, well, the job is already done and the guy is just going to save some time um, to spend more time on your album somewhere else. The thing also with Trigger Track is that using Sidechain, they can control gate on microphone tracks. And so on the toms, it's very important to have gate. 
And on the microphone tracks, I am already doing this for you. I put a gate on each uh, microphones that are on the toms and they are controlled by the trigger track of the same drum. So the microphone track is just opening when the tom is playing and otherwise it is not playing and you don't have any cymbals bleeding and everything sounds much cleaner. And in the snare, for the snare, I am not doing this myself, but you have the microphone tracks, you have the trigger tracks, so if you want to gate the snare in a very, very accurate way, you just have to use a gate on the snare's microphone that is side-chained, side-chained, sorry, with the trigger track and everything is already very good. So let's end this video with some more extracts out of recordings. All right, so we are going to hear um, some more extracts out of uh, a recording session you have already heard in this video because um, this is the same recording session uh, that you heard during the second extract of this video. It was for the band Donner Growl, but we are going to hear uh, a different songs now. And we are going to check the result with the tracks that I am about to provide to the band. Um, so the full result with guitars quiet and you have some uh, draft vocals too and um, as mastering I have Isotope Ozone 8 um, and this plugin basically just generated automatically a mastering and so we are going to hear this result basically just the tracks that I provide uh, with leveling and then a mastering automatically generated and here we go so I have opened this multi-meter here so you can see the volume that we have on the mastering. It's already pretty loud, uh, minus 9 uh, dB RMS. Of course you can go louder but considering we have absolutely raw drums just pre-processed I think this is already pretty cool to have drums that cut through the guitars with such a loud mastering. You can see that the peak is minus 1. It is because I firstly made this mastering for um, a streaming, uh, a track for streaming online, and it is always better to have minus one here. So uh, now we are going to check out all the tracks individually so you can hear how they sound. So these are the kick trigger, no kick microphone on this session. This is basically a sample uh, of one of my uh, kick drums that I have also mixed a little bit um, with like 30% of a Steven Slate kick um, trigger samples and I just found that this way it was working better than my sample alone. So then we have my first snare top microphone which is a Biodynamic M88TG. Then I have the snare trigger, which is a sample of the same snare drum, same recording session, just a little bit of reverb, and this is how the trigger track sound. Now we have the bottom microphone. The second uh, top snare microphone, which is this time a condenser microphone. All microphone together.
and we can actually hear the difference that the trigger is making on the blast beat. You will hear that it is, I mean, the trigger is not so loud, so the difference is very, very uh, thin. And you will see that the level of the trigger uh, track is the same than the first top microphone. So the blend is not even 50-50 uh, between microphone and trigger. It's probably more like 70 microphone and 30% trigger. Just a little bit uh, of a boost and of course when you are doing the leveling you can put more uh, trigger if you want. You can hear also that just with the mastering it's already so much compression that you have some bleedings um, with the microphones and so if you want thanks to this trigger track you can put a gate here and make a side chain so it is controlled by the trigger track and so it is 100% accurate. This is what I have here uh, with, the, with the toms. This is the gate of the first rectum and it is controlled by uh, the trigger of the first rectum. So let's hear basically um, the toms now and we are going to put the trigger with them. Triggers are very very low on the toms, it's basically here. They are basically here just to control um, the gate and then if the band wants more toms trigger, of course they have the track so they can do this and the trigger are uh, made with samples of my uh, kit. So that's it for the um, Tom's tracks. And um, now maybe let's hear to all the other tracks. So the right and the hi-hat, let's hear how they sound. So I have basically low cut, especially on the hi-hat, otherwise the sound is not so clean. A little bit on the right too, and a little bit of a boost in the high frequencies, just to make sure that, um, again, with this pre-processing, um, all the tracks just get along with each other very very well and I just wanted to make sure that no matter what the hi-hat and the ride are going to get through the mix without having to be so so loud. Right, now let's listen to the overhead and you will hear that you have plenty of low frequencies in the overhead because I have a low cut on them but it's not very strict so you can still have some low frequencies out of the overhead if you want. This is definitely up to you during the processing, um, I mean up to the artist I am working with during the processing so yeah I don't want to make things that take already a direction. So now we have the room mics and that's it, we, we heard everything. So two stereo uh, rooms, uh, this one is the brighter one, dynamic microphone, Shure SM57. And then I have the second one, which is, which is a little bit darker.
and basically you can mix these room tracks as you want. You can choose only uh, one of them, you can put reverb, um, you can mix them together and again this is really without any processing and I just leave this to the uh, artist that I am working with and he can do whatever he wants with this. But as I've said the goal is that everything is already pre-processed, no direction is already taken in the processing, just the mandatory stuff that make all the tracks sound well all together in a very easy way so they are as easy to use as a drum machine. So that's it for this video, hope you enjoy it and um, let's just check out the result one last time. Cheers guys! <laughs>